What's up wizards, I'm going to show you how to deploy a package to NPM with all of the most up to date tools. Let's go. We're going to start by naming our package. This is the name that it's going to be used on NPM. We'll give it a license of MIT. Next, we're going to add a TypeScript file to this. Next, I'm going to use PNPM to add TypeScript as a dev dependency. And I'm going to run PNPM TSC init. We're going to add no unchecked index access true. And we're also going to add no emit true. This means that we can use TypeScript as a linter. And this one just tightens up a couple of TypeScript rules. We're also going to run git init in order to make sure that we've initialized a git repository. And inside a git ignore file, we're going to add node modules and dist. We're now going to add tsup. tsup is going to bundle our library for us, turning the files from TypeScript files into JavaScript files. We're going to add a build script here where we're calling tsup on index.ts and formatting it in CJS and ESM. We can run this with pnpm run build. What we end up with is a dist index.js file with a bunch of different stuff in, but our add function is in there. And we also also get the MJS version too. We're going to add three properties to our package.json. Our main is going to point to our index.js, which is our CJS export. Next, we'll have module, which is pointing to MJS, and we'll have types pointing to index.d.ts. We also want to make sure our code is okay, so we're going to add a lint script here, which is calling TSC. If we run this, it's going to report if we have any type errors in our application, so we can fix those and make sure we don't ship anything broken to production. Next, we're going to add a CLI called change sets. Change sets takes all of the stress out of versioning your package. We're now going to run pnpm change set init. This adds a folder called .change set up here, which adds a config.json and a readme with some information about change sets. Because we're now thinking about versioning, we should add an initial version to our package. Every time you want to make a change, you should add a change set, which is a markdown file that lets you describe the change you're making. You can choose what kind of change you want it to be, let's say it's a patch, and we can describe the change that we want to occur. This will add a markdown file with a funky name into your change set directory. Now it's time to set up the CI to make sure that we don't have to manually deploy all our work. I'm going to add a GitHub action workflow called main.yaml. Inside main.yaml, I'm going to give my GitHub action a name. I'm going to say that it's going to run on push on all branches. It checks out the repository, sets up pnpm, and then sets up node. Next, we're going to install with a frozen lock file and then run lint and build. Having these steps in my CI makes sure that I know that whenever my code changes, it's all good. Here we can see that all of my steps passed, including all of the linting where it ran TSC and then ran my TS up. I'm now going to add a second workflow file, which is going to handle publishing my package. From this, we're going to publish on the main branch only. We're going to add a concurrency to make sure that two published workflows can't be happening at the same time. We're going to do the same actions as before. Check out the repo, set up pnpm, set up node, and then install all the packages. This last step is called create pull request or publish, and it's using the change set action. We're also going to add a with publish pnpm run build. Our published workflow just ran for the first time. Let's see what happened. Our workflow actually created a PR. This PR, when we look at it, removes the change set, adds the change set to a change log, and versions our package. Now, if we were to merge this package, then it would actually deploy our package to npm for us. This means that whenever someone makes a contribution to your package, you can ask them to add a change set. Then, when you're ready to send it live, you just push the green merge button. Button. Using pnpm speeds up all of our GitHub actions because it has a really, really fast cache. Using tsup is a great way to serve up CJS and ESM modules. We use TypeScript as a linter and we use change sets to handle all of the deployments. Thanks so much for joining along. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.